What's really behind the Ukraine crisis? Now, while this is not meant to be a comprehensive overview of the unrest, it will serve as a useful primer. After all, it's a YouTube video. It's not an essay or a book. The main driving factor behind the uprising in Ukraine, and one that's been buried as a footnote by the corporate media, as would be expected, is that this is yet another faux revolution instigated by Washington in an attempt to geopolitically isolate Russia as part of NATO's encirclement of Moscow. You may remember back in 2004, Viktor Yushchenko, the Orange Revolution in Ukraine, which of course was accomplished, as is widely acknowledged now, with the aid of the Washington establishment and specifically the National Endowment for Democracy, Freedom House and George Soros's Open Society Institute, instigating these faux protests as an act of regime change. And lo and behold, one of the major protest groups involved in this uprising, you call it a protest group, it's actually a very violent organisation, Spilna Sprava, translated as the right deed, which is an Open Society Institute supported and funded group. So one of the major protest groups behind this uprising funded by George Soros. Now just as with all military adventures, faux uprisings and instigated acts of regime change, you have a viral YouTube video to back it up. Remember the Coney 2012 scam? Well now we've got the I am a Ukrainian scam. This is a video which has already achieved one and a half million views on YouTube. This attractive woman explaining the grassroots credibility of the Ukrainian protest movement. But if you actually have a look at who's behind this video, it's the same people who were involved in the 2004 uprising backed by the Washington establishment. Go to the author of the video and it explains that it's straight out of Stanford University. It's funded by a Moroccan prince and it's inspired by the work of Stanford University's Larry Diamond. And Larry Diamond's an interesting character because he's involved with, yes, you guessed it, the National Endowment for Democracy. The same group that was involved in the fake 2004 revolution in the Ukraine, which saw Viktor Yushchenko come to power at the behest of the Washington establishment. So we have viral YouTube videos created by people linked to the very entities that were behind the 2004 faux revolution, which again saw Yushchenko come to power, an act of regime change. So again, they put this attractive Ukrainian woman up there to afford the protest movement credibility and legitimacy. Because if you look at the actual actions of the so-called protest movement, they've been anything but. And just as the so-called protesters in Libya and Syria were dubbed demonstrators before they started blowing up universities and seizing tanks and using anti-aircraft missiles, the mass media is portraying these Ukrainian demonstrators as protesters while they violently seize government buildings and police stations. Now, I don't care what side you're on, even if you support this so-called protest movement, how do you think the US government would react if, quote, protesters in the United States, armed with weapons, started violently seizing control of police stations and government buildings. Do you think that they'd be softly, softly catchy monkey with them? Or would they completely obliterate them? Well, obviously they would. And yet, of course, the characterization of these protesters as that, as demonstrators and protesters, when in fact, even if you agree with their cause, you have to acknowledge that they're violent revolutionaries and in some cases militants because unlike the 
attractive Ukrainian woman in the fake viral YouTube video. This is not a protest. It's an act of regime change. And these protesters, many of them who are even unaware of this, are mere pawns in a bigger game. The protesters are being paid cash money to maintain their demonstration and occupation. Where's some of that money coming from? It's coming from the five billion dollars that the United States government invested to quote, help Ukraine achieve these and other goals. According to US Assistant Secretary of State for Europe, Victoria Newland, at a national press club conference, December 13, 2013. And what were those goals? Well, it was to achieve a, quote, good form of government. Now, according to Victoria Newland, what does a good form of government represent? Well, it represents the United States, Washington, being able to pick and choose its crony puppets to staff the Ukrainian puppet government. Because, of course, Newland and top diplomat Jeffrey Pyatt were caught in a leaked phone conversation discussing on which politicians they would choose to run the Ukrainian government after the phony revolution achieves its goal of regime change. He's now gotten both Seri and Ban Ki-moon to agree that Seri could come in Monday or Tuesday. Okay. So that would be great, I think, to help glue this thing and have the UN help glue it and, you know, fuck the EU. No, exactly. And I think we've got to do something to make it stick together because you can be pretty sure that if it does, if it does start to gain altitude, the Russians will be working behind the scenes to try to torpedo it. Now, after this emerged, Newland did not apologize for the fact that she was caught conspiring on how to overthrow an elected government. She apologised for being rude to the European Union. Which gets us back to the crux of the issue, which is the fact that these protests started after Ukraine rejected an economic deal with the European Union in favour for one with Russia. And this is what prompted many of the Ukrainians living in the west of the country, who genuinely do hate Russia because of its past, to start these protests. So many of the initial protests may have been genuine people expressing their grievances. But why they would want to side with the EU is baffling. They're complaining about corruption within the Ukrainian government, which is a fair point. But corruption is endemic within the European Union. The cost of the European Union's corruption on an annual basis, is almost the entire GDP of Ukraine's whole economy. So yes, many of these protests started with genuine grievances against corruption within the Ukrainian government. But siding with the EU, which is one of the most corrupt institutions on the planet, is really not going to solve the problem of corruption. And neither is siding with... Mr. Bomb 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 Iran, John McCain, who visited Ukraine back in December, at the same time Victoria Newland gave that speech about $5 billion being invested into the Ukrainian protest movement. McCain gave a speech saying, we want to make it clear to Russia and Vladimir Putin that interference in the affairs of Ukraine is not acceptable to the United States. So while McCain, who of course supported the overthrow of Libya and attempted to do the same in Syria, backing jihadist terrorists in the process, he's saying that the Ukrainian government's decision to make a trade deal with Putin over the EU, an economic deal, was an interference in their internal affairs. I would say that Victoria Newland's open statement leaked conversation conspiring to pick and choose Ukraine's future leaders, I would say that that's probably more of an example of interfering in a country's internal affairs. So here's the truth about what's happening in the Ukraine in summary. And again, 
This is summative. It's not comprehensive. It's a YouTube video. There are many different factors at play. But the main factor at play is that this is part of the geopolitical isolation of Russia. It started off with Ukraine making an economic pact with Russia and in the process rejecting the EU. That started some of the initial protests. It then looked as if the EU was backing off because they're afraid of Russia taking retribution against the European Union by cutting off the oil pipeline which runs from Russia to the EU. So as this began to descend into almost civil war, even the EU saw sense and begin to back off their agenda. Then Victoria Newland arrived on the scene with her fuck the EU leaked phone conversation. And now it really appears as if Washington is ready to risk a major advance towards a new Cold War by turning these protests into not only complete mass civil unrest, but actual civil war. And if you want to read a great summary article explaining all this, Paul Craig Roberts, former Treasury Secretary, Washington orchestrated protests are destabilizing Ukraine. It's about the CIA, the State Department, NGOs, the National Endowment for Democracy, doing just what they did back in 2004, which is instigating this fake revolution and ensuring it turns violent and bloody as part of regime change to overthrow the Ukrainian government and to get one step closer to the Russian frontier, encircling Moscow with military bases as part of Washington's goal to impose hegemony over the entire world. The difference between 2004 and now is that they risk sparking a new Cold War in doing so. This is Paul Joseph Watson reporting for Infowars.com.